Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Hello, beautiful. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. Let me get back on video here. Okay. How are you doing? <laughs> I, can't I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> and, if I, and if I did, you know, it would be in vain. So uh, Hello. <laughs> how are you today? Good? Wonderful. Yes, you see, my, I got my, I got my, uh, you like your bag? <laughs> carry it, girl, carry it. Wear it out. We're holding it now. That's how I know you love it. I know you love it. All right, let me. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. You are back at my spot right here. There's an address in your face. <laughs> Undeniable. This right here, right here. This is the place where the conversation is pointed. And the guests right there are sharp. And the responses are never dull. We are here with the beautiful Delena e. D., um, Elliott. I wanted to put your, well, now I want to make sure I have this correct because I have Delena Michelle Elliott. Yes, most definitely. Thank Michelle you. with one L. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, did you get that, Brains? Okay, that's Michelle with one L. We're going <laughs> to ask her how she got that name. Um, you know, she is into a space that we all hope to be into or try to get into, and that's wealth. But I got some tr some tricky questions for her because it's not just about trying to attain it, but it's how do we retain it, mm. okay? And then how do we distribute it for generational wealth? Yes. And what happens if you don't have nobody to leave it to? <laughs> Come on. We're going to talk about that too because, you know, I'm telling you, my list of suitors is getting short when you think about family lineage and just how you found the space. So tell us, Queen, how did you arrive here? Tell my brains a little bit more about you. And wow. welcome to our well, well, April, and thank you for other queens. I'm so excited to be here with you. Uh -huh. um, I am a little country girl from Fayetteville, North Carolina. My parents, uh, from my grandparents on, were military. And so um, my mom, my mother and father were both military. They met they met in, in the military, you know. And so that led us to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And... Um, um, unfortunately, my parents divorced when I was about five years old, mm. and so my mom um, raised my sister and I by herself, literally, and we, April, she was a trooper, okay? She was brilliant in school. She could have she could have been the valedictorian in school. You know, she was uh, brought up in Alabama, so the, the racist babe, woo, back in the day. Okay. Of Alabama, but she was so determined to be a successful woman, um, even as a single mom, that she, while she was raising us, we lived in the projects, okay? Mm -hmm. While she was raising us in the projects, she basically enrolled herself in an HBCU in oh. Fayetteville, Fayetteville State University. Okay, go Broncos, wow. right? Okay. <laughs> and she got her teaching degree. Wow. April, when you say my story, I, at 12 years old, when I was in middle school, was her project. Mm -hmm. I had to go around and interview my teachers. I had to interview students. I had to talk about what was going on in the middle school, what the kids were going through. Now, and I'm in the seventh grade, okay? And I had to put that report together. And then I gave my presentation to the college class. Wow. And she was graded on that presentation. Wow. Okay, so to say that uh, that hey, this is my destiny, 
Um, teaching and training and coaching uh, was my passion because she put it in me. But I saw her also go from the projects to building a house from the ground. Mm-hmm. And she, every month, April, I would see her once we got into that home, take a shoebox of all her bills. And she would spread out all her bills in the middle of her bed. And she would write out her checks to pay her bills, package everything up, put the receipts and everything in the in the shoebox, and put it on the top of the shelf. What? Wait no okay. favor. Wait no favor. Okay. Come on. Okay. Wait no favor. And and so it was this gonna be was done. a routine. This was a routine of her managing her money. This was a routine. I saw her raise two girls, go to school, work, and pay her bills. Mm. So, so that that um, impression, okay, of my subconscious, um, gave me uh, a reason to get into banking and finance. Um, she she opened up a savings account for my sister and I put us on a joint account with her, took us to the credit union. We, we would go and watch her make deposits. You know, we had our, we had our little, what they call at the in credit union was a fat cat account. So we, we were already in banking and had a bank account when we were in middle school and high school. So, right, so it was right. just a natural thing to be able to see, right. um, you know, banking um, and learning uh, in, in that. So that, that's basically my roots. <laughs> And I can say I'm very fortunate, too. And um, my parents taught me financial literacy. I had a reading challenge when I grew up. I was dyslexic a little bit. But do you know what my favorite magazine was to read? Because my my father got me into reading magazines. My favorite magazine was uh, the um, Newsweek. See? And, And financial magazines. Don't ask me why. You know, I couldn't forget to put the ED on the end of words and forget how the PH supposed to be an F. But baby, I sure did get through those financial magazines. And it was something that was ingrained in me that was second nature. You know, investing in precious metals, Mm. world currency. It was a conversation. Mm, You know, and it is not taught. I don't care what nationality, what ethnicity you are. You're not teaching your kids financial literacy on an international Mm. perspective. We need to be talking about the yen and the euro Mm. and the the ruple. We need to be talking about something outside of the dollar that is not backed by anything. But you have a very interesting perspective because I went in and I checked you out. Oh, yes. (laughs) <laughs> you check me out, girl. I read, you girl, I read you like a Jackie Collins novel from cover to cover. <laughs> hey, I know what I know. Right? Okay. I'm still learning, right? All right. But, hey, but I'm, I'm, I'm good in my lane. Okay? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're speeding in it because you have a very interesting philosophy about wealth, mindset, and meditation. I went in and I listened to your, uh, your affirmation. And people need to understand that money is nothing but energy. I know that we, that's easy for you to say, April, when you can pay your light bill or when you can pay your babysitter or when you got a car and you're not on the bus. But no, let me tell you, if the mind can conceive it, baby, you can achieve it. Yes, 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 yes. Money is an exchange of energy. Get with the right people. Get with the flow. And don't be a crook. Mm, come on. Today is tax day. Okay, and, and baby, I had to, I had to pay one. But I gotta I was, pay. I gotta pay this year too, girl. My 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 accountant called me about 35, 40 minutes ago. She said, "Well, let me tell you your news. Your yes. taxes done, but you owe the IRS." But that's okay. That that that's is okay. what I say too. We live in the greatest country in the world. Yes. And, uh, Delaney, you've l- lived like I've lived in different yes. countries, traveled different countries. You know that uh, the money is funny and the change is strange. And Come you on. get over in these countries, you don't even have a proper toilet in your house, yeah. much less publicly. You don't have clean water. You know, you can't just go in the grocery store and pick anything that you mm-hmm. want to eat. You know, you can't flick on a switch and there's electricity. Y'all just don't know what it is to have and have not. You really don't. And so to be able to pay your fair share, yes, it's unfair. Yes, it's some trickery and some crookery. Absolutely. You know, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And the thing, the powerful thing about it, the way I look at it, because we were totally, and I know some people may say, well, how could you say blessed? We were blessed 
during this pandemic. Why? Because we were living, April, on another dimension. We were not caught up what? in what was going on. What? We, were, we, were, we were enveloped in the desire of our heart. And so we would continue to pursue what we were, what we were um, in in our financial services and our care for people and our customers and our coaching and bringing this message to the masses in our inner circle. And we were blessed. We made more money in the last, over the last two years than we made in, in our whole career. It was because of the conditioning of the mind. And so thank you so much for bringing that up because that is the power and people want to walk over that piece. You no, know, just you have to do one, two, three, ABC. No, no, no. But you get the mind right, money will follow you. Money will chase you down. They they real girl don't please they don't they don't even understand Ooh, girl do they I know and when you when oh. you put the, when you put the plan in place and it's more than a wish list okay brains it's not just abracadabra I got it okay oh yeah I wish I had a million dollars no universe wants you to be specific thank you Pacific is an ocean specific <laughs> is exactly what you need okay I love it. you need to be on point because okay what are you willing to sacrifice for that because to whom much is given much is required mm. nobody just gonna give you a million dollars because you cute that costs extra mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and teaching this to our young people you know our yes. young people don't even want to deal with the dollar anymore they're dealing in bitcoin and um and Ethereum and all these other different types of cryptocurrency. Where do you see? <clears throat> hmm. Because money is only as powerful as we put on it. You know, it's, right. it's only got the right. value that idea. we put on it. Yeah, money is an idea. It is an idea. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. so so shape that, frame that for us. And and how do we get ready to move into, like you say, the next realm? Because it's not going to be the dollar bills. Right, right. Basically, again, I, I have... I teach a soul development life cycle. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, you know, April, you were checking it out. <laughs> I told <Okay>. you. <laughs> because I'm a technologist, you know, my 30 years of banking also includes uh, technology. So the last, you know, 10 years I've been, I've been involved in technology, technology and credit cards, home loans, you know, student loans, um, um, et cetera. Okay. And, and so we look at the, the process of, how we do code changes, right? How we code, you know, we use our phone now as our credit card, tap and pay, you know? Um, so like you was talking about the digital world of money, the digital currency, um, everything is data. It's about the data. Whoever has the most data is going to have the most money. Why? Because that's buying habits, that's, that's, that's traditions, that's, oh. that's behavior. Okay, right. so companies are companies are amassing all of our data right. to learn our habits and our ways and our idiosyncrasies. Why? So they can advertise to us. So so they know where we're gonna put our, our money, what, what right. we want to purchase, and you know, the, and, the, the and people, motion of that. Right. But also, okay, brains, every time you hit that little key fob when you are at uh, Vons and you think that you are getting a discount, you uh, they're paying you for your information. Yes. Did you pay by credit card? What Come bank on. did you play, pay to? Come on. Uh, and you mean to tell me that you get Reynolds wrap? Really? Okay, well, let's Come send on. you the coupons for that versus this person. So again, that data collecting is huge. And don't think that they, yeah, and something else is off the subject, but I think that they putting a little chip up your butt every time they give you a colonoscopy because they check in your whereabouts. Everything. Uh, everything. They know everything, everything about you. Folks worried about what they telling on Facebook. Well, number one, you gave it up. Okay. You gave all the information up. You got the picture of the baby in the womb. You got the picture. Where you, of, where you of, go on vacation? Where you vacation? Grandma ordered the hospital. Grandma in and she dying. You know, you Come got on. all that all out there. This data. data. And then you get crunchy when somebody hacks you or says something out of character. Well, you know, to whom much is given. You, and you know why they were so they were so ready, April, to give it up because it was free. Well, you know, they thought they were getting something for free. That's right. what you That's give what I'm all this information. Right. You give up all this information and Mr. Zuckerberg and his sack of cronies, they collect all this and then you get mad and talk about invasion of your privacy. You can't Thank have you. it both ways. But if but if Facebook, when they first came out, 
would have charged people to, to use that platform, we would have been a little bit more cautious as to how much data we were given because we were paying for it. But right, when but they also presented themselves to be free. Well, yeah, right, okay, but along those same lines, he can still charge. And could yeah, you yeah, yeah. imagine? Could you imagine going through this pandemic without social media? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like I said, it's it's a two edged sword. It's a two edged sword. Okay. So that and so if we learn to leverage, that's right. Okay. And that's why it's so important. We, you know, I'll start with the self-analysis. Where are we, right, in our money consciousness? And then, the, and then the next phase is the desire. Where do you want to be? What is your desired state of your finances? What is the desired state of your lifestyle? You know, pencil that out. Get with your family, significant other, children, whoever depends on you. And some, if you just you, get with you. What is it that you want out well, of life? Like old court with yourself. <laughs> okay, old, old in a court with yourself. And then the design. What is your design? Get, you know, get with your professional. Talk about the design plan. What is it? How am I going to earn my money? How am I going to multiply it? Where am I going to grow it? Where, how am I going to transfer it to the next generation? What, what does my will say? You know, do I have a will, medical will, you know, uh, uh, um, various wills to, to different people? Right. You know, like and you know what? Like you, better check your bene- you better check your beneficiaries' brains because hey, oh, girl, they, they might be dead or or you done, uh, you forgot you had this policy. Remarried. You still got money. Yeah, remarried. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or the kid done pissed you off and you will change your mind. You better get all your paperwork in order because they don't do that. But you know, there's and a fear. Reviews. Well, and it's a fear. Reviews. People don't yeah. they, they don't think about their legacy. They don't think about long term. They it's the quick fix. It's give yeah. it to me right now. You know, just yeah. give it to me right now. Uh if I win the lottery, I don't want, you know, 26 installments. Give me the lump sum, you know. <laughs> and I and I get it. I get it. Because tomorrow is not promised to you. Your next breath is not promised to you. I mean, just keep it 100. Yes, it. But yes, it. the smart person prepares because if you do not plan, your plan will fail. Thank you. Thank you. You know, oh my goodness. you can't, you can't, you can't fear, you know, you can't fear it. Um, and then you worked all your life for that little piece of house and you don't have sense enough hey, bro. to take four, $500, go down, maybe even to the legal aid society. You don't know till you ask and let somebody know where you want it to go. Yes. You got all this stuff in your house, you're hoarding, you know, you want to leave it to Aunt Betty to come in there and clean it out. It's not fair, Brains. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not. But I, I'll never forget, April, when my husband's grandmother passed away. Um, grandma was real old school, right? She 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 had a bank account, but most of her money was in that house. Oh, it was Lord. in her purse, in the walls, in the mattress. I mean, yeah. literally. Outside, in, country, in, okay? in, a, in a tin can. My, oh. mama used to, my mama used to pin hers to the inside of the curtain, girl. See? Come on, girl. Okay. And so when she passed, um, you know, we, we, the the kids went in and, you know, looking for stuff and pulling. My mother-in-law said she was counting so much money. She had to pause and wait. She said she had to just push herself away because she was just counting the money, counting the money. Yeah. Because, you know, 1929, 1930s, that was the great depression. They saw folks jumping out the window. Exactly. You know? And uh, my mother grew up in 19, she was born in 29. Mm-hmm. And she was doing day work for a woman. I love to tell the story. She was doing what day work for the woman and the woman told her, hey, you know, Bertha, why don't you give me a few dollars out of your paycheck? I'm getting ready to start a business and this business is going to be real successful. You know, um, and my mother, oh no, you know, I got kids and I got responsibility. I didn't do it. Do you know what that company was, girl? Seize Candy. She's candy, but she didn't. She felt she the fear, but she didn't do it anyway. And that's two, three, you know, two, three dollars. And I understand investing. Investing is risky, but it's better than sitting here not getting no money. Do you remember Thank you could get like eight percent, nine percent on your savings account? I looked, I looked at my bank statement in my savings account and they had given me like two dollars. I was like, this is not even worth the paper. It's See, printed girl, on. Now you in my lane. Now you in my lane. <laughs> okay. Girl, there's a secret sauce in life insurance. I'm telling you right now. 
Italian okay, now know. everybody, let's hip us to this. Hip us to this, and I, I mean game in a good right, way, a good way. way. Right, yeah, right, for, right. for those that don't speak Ebonics. Right. <laughs> but, okay, uh, but I need you to, to let us know what is the story with life insurance because I got some questions about that. So okay. you, you tell okay. me what, what's going on. Okay, basically, life insurance took a shift back in the late 80s, early 90s, okay? Because people are definitely starting to live longer, all right? So, so we had to move as an industry from the just being a death benefit for beneficiaries to being living benefits with ass accessibility to that face amount if something happens while you are living, okay? And not only if something happens, you have access to the money, but also a what we call a safe investment opportunity in cash value policies so that you can now borrow against the equity in your life insurance policy to make purchases, the loan, the loan that you pay back, the interest rate that you pay back in, in that um, loan in a life insurance policy is going to be less than a credit card, it's going to be less than a personal loan, and you don't have to have a credit score to qualify for it because it's your money. And so we're teaching people that may not have, you know, full access to all the capital based on credit, based on, um, 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 you know, availability, I'll just put it that way to be nice. Um, you can right. start in life insurance, building cash value and equity. And so we're trying to get this message out to the younger people, do an illustration, show them if they put some money away, how, based on the market, you know, in the past, volatility, et cetera, how they can grow their money safely. Okay. And that's, that's the, and that's the key. You know, all not right. all you policies said, are alike. Not all, not all advisors know how to reposition your assets. So get with someone like myself and my husband, of course. Um, but but make sure you call even if you have a policy and you have an agent that you absolutely love. Find out what the benefits and the features are of the policy that you have. If you have a term policy, term means term. It's like renting. It's going to run out. Do you have a 10, 20, term. 30 year term? I, my mother turned. My mother. They were still sending her a bill. I'm not going to name the company. Right. Uh, but uh, she was 80 years old and she had turned out. See? Okay. But let me just, just hit, yes. I just want to hit on a couple things. Everyone's individual circumstances and exactly. situation is going to be varied based on your assets, how old you are, your health, all of that. I get that. But these are some of the things that ring my bell, okay? On the flip side. Now you say build equity. Yes. Okay. So I understand that I'm doing a cash value. Yes. It's like, and Brain's trying to make it simple for you, like putting it in a savings account, like putting it in a 401k, like putting it in an IRA, like putting it in a CD, but it's not a personal slush fund. Okay. Mm. So I ask you that when you say build, building the equity, it's going to take time. Is it gaining interest? It as is I gaining these interest. Deposits? Okay. It's gaining interest. And what happens is it is what we call indexing. Okay. okay. So an index basically means just like the S&P 500 index in the stock market. The company does not put your money in the stock market, but they do with your premiums. Every month that you pay or, or if you pay your premiums on an annual basis, they are looking at the growth that they are earning on the money that they are investing. And based on your, what we call your participation rate, they are looking at how much of that premium they're going to use as a credit towards the interest. So let's say the interest rates go up to 15%. Based on the caps and the participation rate that you have agreed to in your policy, you won't be able to get the whole 15%, but maybe let's say they'll give you 8% growth. Okay. If the market crashes and it goes below zero, which the stock market does, and you know you get that little negative, okay? You get to start, companies start, you start seeing it in the red. The, the power of life insurance, April, and what we call our fixed index products is that you have a cap of zero. So if the interest rates go to 15 and then they go below 10, yours stay at zero. So the, to the worst case scenario, you stay wherever your 
interest credit was along with your principal at that time. When the market comes back up from where you are here, that's where you start growing again. Okay. That's the power of fixed index product. Uh, product. Okay. Now you say cash value. Yes. All right. So use round figures. You got a $10,000 policy. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I'm sorry, I want to change my question. It's yeah. borrowing against that. You got a $10,000 yes. policy, you know, uh, Uncle Bobby fell off the roof and broke his foot. He need $3,000. Okay. The difference is $7,000. What that policy is now cashed out at. Don't think that you're going to get 10 plus three brains because you no, have to pay, no, no, you have to pay that 3000 back. You're paying that back to yourself at a particular interest rate, which exactly. that interest rate may not be the fixed cap that you just explained. It could be a different rate. That's good. That's it, girl. See, I brains. I'm talking, I you talk it. about you talk about a safe end. Yes. Okay. It's a safe end, but what is it when it comes out? What are the taxes on that? Because 401ks, only thing that I know of that is not taxed is this Roth IRA, but it's taxed before it goes in. Anything mm -hmm. else is a credit that offsets a debit. Okay, so tell me about you know some of the tax liabilities of Uncle Bobby's. $3,000. I absolutely love it. And thank you so much for asking because the taxability on a index product, if it's within the life insurance uh, product, because you are taking that money out as equity, if you will, just like you borrow against equity in your house, it is zero tax. Zero tax. It's zero tax? Zero tax. See what okay, we will do. Okay. Now, it may be zero tax, but that's going to add to your taxable income. All depends. All depends. What we do, what we do in our calculation, we make sure that what you are receiving, okay, matches up to the standard deduction that you have, that, that, that the IRS allows you to have. So if that is, if that standard deduction is 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 um is equal to or more than what you are receiving that is taxable okay let's say if it, if it's an annuity because an annuity is a tax deferred product life insurance is not a tax deferred product life insurance is like the Roth IRA because you already were taxed on the on the money that you used to pay your premium okay mm -hmm. Right. That's why you. That's why you want to. That's why you want to work with what we the um, new product that we have that came out in the '90s, the Index Universal Life Policy, because that money that you pull out as a loan is not taxable because it's already taxed when it went in. So mm -hmm. the gain, the interest credit in a within an Index Universal Life Policy is not taxed. Okay, brains, go back and rewind that. I want you to take your time and listen to it. Yes. Really, yes. because it is a, it's a package, okay? Yes. So what you need to do is work with dedicated professionals like Mrs. Elliot or Mr. Elliot to point you in the right way, even if you already have a vehicle. Yes. So you need to diversify your portfolio, That's okay? It. That's financial talk, brains. That means don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? You need to have... Precious metals, you need to have stocks, you need to have bonds, you need to have... Insurance is an offset to liability. That's what it does. It protects you against liability. And everything is a liability. Now, when people open their cotton pick and mouth, it's a liability. When you have a business or a small business, that's the last thing. And one of the things that you skimp on is offsetting your liability. You know, I don't let people come work on my house. I ask them, look, you got workers' compensation? That's it. Do you have, you, and I want to see the policy. I'm Are not blinded. Like, they beat up, fell off my roof and Thank sue you. me. That's it. You know, you let somebody drive your car, but they're not insured. Is your hmm. vehicle insured? That's good. This is your vehicle. This is your vehicle right here. And it needs to be insured for your children, oh, for I your children's it. children. Thank you. You know, I just, I'm telling you, and it's not as expensive as you think. You're tricking off more money on fast food and coffee, gourmet coffee, than you would on a life insurance policy. Sometimes they could be as small as $30, $40. Now, if you're mm. trying to get into the, you know, the gazillions, then that's something else. 
Well, let me ask you this question. You know, folks try to get an insurance policy, insurance policy on somebody else. How does that work? You have to have what we call an insurable interest. Hmm. You have to, they have to, um, you have to have an interest on the reason why if something happens to them, you need the money. For example, let's say that you have someone that, that's working for your company, April, and they are a key person. It, and if you lose that key person with all of their um, intellectual property, right? All of their expertise, the, 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 you guys work with this company together and, 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 and he or she has got half of the knowledge you know, that both of you came into the business with. Well, you have an insurable interest if you lose that person, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get key person insurance on that person. Mm. Okay, as an like employer. You see like you see celebrities, you know, oh, uh, they they might want to put a, you know, they want, want to put insurance on their booty or they might want to put insurance on their legs. Well, no, and I say that because, yeah. you know, that's, 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 they, that's that, how they make their money. That's they, how they make their money. That's, it. that's, that's how they make that. their money. So you can't do that. But I'm just saying, you know, you see people in the news and he killed his wife or whatever because of the insurance policy. Yeah. Number one, the insurance policy got to be in effect. Full right. effect first. You can't get an insurance policy and then try to bump somebody off in six months. No. Okay. No. Killing them is not, you it's not the right thing to do anyway. And commit suicide. Then not, that, that's not going to pay. So, so, we okay. so, so, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Now, it used to be different when people uh, died by, you know, died by suicide. You say commit by suicide, folks get crunchy. Right. Uh, died and, by suicide. And, right. Yeah. So, um, and that's, you know, paying respect to anyone that's. Yes been through that but you get an insurance policy and then you do a untimely act they don't pay on that no nope, not not a, they pay if it's over two years but mm. if you get an insurance policy and like you said you die by suicide in six months it would not pay wow yes you know it's it's a lot to consider yes it's it a lot to consider and you don't have to be old to have insurance or to die brains the world is a crazy place mm -hmm. friends of mine passed away in mass suicide shooting in the club in hollywood wow wow you know you could have an unfortunate accident that would make you disabled that you're not able to go back to your regular work you still That's need it. to offset the liability it's called you, asset protection you want to protect your asset income protection you want to protect your income we have nfl players and coaches April, mm. that are what we call max funding this fixed index universal life policies. Wow. Up to uh, uh, annual premiums of a million dollars so that they have enough insurance and face amount and living benefits Absolutely. and cash value equity. So when they retire from the NFL, they've got money. They it's don't not, have to because they're not, not going to be able to walk. Protected, okay? They not they don't be able to walk. They back be hurt. Thank you. On prescription medications or what's that brain trauma that they exactly. have? Exactly. You know, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of it. I know some NFL players that are selling insurance. Yes. Just for that very reason, because you know you got a limited time span. Any athlete. Any I athlete. Know, I, I don't know how long you can back to play. Right. You know, I look at some of them sometime and I'm like, I don't know how in the world you out there playing and you just had that major injury. I was looking at Tiger walking down the, the greens. I was just so proud of him. But just it's that tenacity. It is that mindset. It is that will. That is that drive. And that's what you work with people on in your coaching program, correct? Exactly. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We help you determine what it is that you want. A lot of us, April, we have, we have really been... The, you remember the movie Inception with um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We A lot of our ideas of what we're doing in our jobs, relationships, uh, visions, purposes, they're not ours. Mm -hmm. It was incepted. Mm -hmm. Somebody else fed us what we should be, who we should be, what we should pursue. And some of it was very honest. Some of it, you know, it wasn't manipulation. It was just, you know, trying to, sometimes our parents try to protect us or, or a spouse or, you know, or, or a good coach or a guidance counselor at school. So when, when we sit down and we walk through 
you know, our, our self-analysis and we, you know, we, we, we start working with some of the emotional wounds or money wounds or, or I call it even vision wounds. You know, some, some of us had an idea to be something, right? And, and, and maybe a teacher said, oh, no, you don't need to speak. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. Well, I call that a vision wound. Right. Because somewhere in our subconscious, we want to say, I should not desire that anymore. Mm. So you have adults that are educated, married with children, running businesses. A lot of, a lot of the women that I coach are high-performing women that lead tribes, doctors, solopreneurs, okay? And I'm walking them through wounds, healing of wounds, that they are like, this is why I've been stuck. Or this is why I've, I've done well, but I've not done as well as I know I can. Wow. But it's also the fear of success. Yes. It's the fear of success. It too, it's a lot of responsibility to be on Thank top. You. Brains, <laughs> let me tell you. When you're on the top, you be like, okay, where else am I going to go? There ain't nowhere to go but down. And you don't want to go down. And then you up there, you know, a lot of times by yourself. Come on. So you need to have a support system. You need yes. to work with women like Mrs. Elliot to really kind of keep you focused, to be your cheerleader, to let you know that it is all right to be uh, wealthy, mm. okay, and to have money. There's no shame associated with that. If you do the right thing, what it That's brings, it. you know, That's you got it. to pay it forward. You got to be your sister and brother's keeper. You got to see if you're not, you're contractive, you're not expansive. Mm. And so what we want is sisters like Mrs. Elliot, that's going to keep that open for you. That's going to keep, you know, keep your frequency yeah. high. That's going to be your cheerleader. Okay. Yeah. And also get you some insurance to cover your liability. <laughs> <laughs> With living benefits and death benefits. Okay. What? Okay. So, Brains, thank you so much for joining in with us. We just had a great conversation, but you know, we have to keep it 500 because 100 ain't yes. going to do nothing. Okay. <laughs> please tell them, uh, Delaney, how to get in contact with you, please. My website is womenwithwealth.com. That's womenwithwealth.com. You can reach me um, uh, on uh, Facebook at Delaney Michelle with one L, M I C H E L E. And. <laughs> And my email, Delana, D-E-L-A-Y-N-A, -A at womenwithwealth.com. I want to hear from you. Thank you so much, April. This was so wonderful, girl. You I love awesome. you. I love you so much. <laughs> uh, Brace, and handle your business. Do what I need you to do. Go in and like, love, share, and subscribe, please. Like, love, and share, and subscribe to here on the edge. Okay? And another thing I need you to do. Be sure you put on a smile because you're not fully dressed without one. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye.